Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to quickly go through my background um, just to give you more context of me, how I do makeup and um, my, my sort of philosophy and how I go about it. So basically, well before makeup, um, straight out of high school, I started uh, at the Alfred Hospital as a nurse and I was really lucky I got in just before they phased out hospital training. So I was living in at the Alfred for three years and did my, my, finished my training up there in Melbourne and um, then I was nursing for about 12 years full time. So I end up in a quite a senior position in charge of wards and things like that. Um, but running in the background all my life, actually, I've always loved painting, which is sort of where the makeup side comes in. So I'll just go through a little bit. These are some of my paintings. Um, I've always done it uh, uh, since a child. It was sort of my dream to be an artist. Um, oil paint is sort of my preference, really. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I sort of, I don't paint the same thing. I just tend to paint whatever I think is beautiful, really. But um, what happened was, if I go back to nursing, when I'd been nursing for about 12 years, I was on night shift and I was working in charge. And to be honest, I was just really over it. And I just, and I was painting, but hadn't really gone anywhere with it. And I just thought there has to be something else. And um, I was just home one night watching the Oscars and the makeup category came. Okay, there we are. Yes. That's Oscars, um, that category is really what prompted me to get into makeup. So in Australia at the time, the best makeup artist to train with was a guy called Peter Frampton. And he just recently won um, the Oscar for Mel Gibson's film Braveheart. Um, he'd also won a BAFTA, which is the British equivalent of an Oscar for Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. And after that, he retired out to the Gold Coast. So um, I applied and I had to fly up to the Gold Coast from Melbourne and be interviewed by him. And he just handpicks who he wants. So I was really fortunate. I got, um, I got into training with him. I was up on the Gold Coast for a number of months, learning all aspects of makeup, um, from beauty, character makeup, through to special effects and all that sort of thing uh, to do with feature film work. Um, I also went over to Los Angeles and trained with the Westmores, um, who in the makeup world are really, really famous in Hollywood. Um, there's, there's about five brothers. This is two of them, Marvin and Michael, um, who they're, they're getting the, um, their stars on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood. That's how big they are over there. Um, and they do all the makeups for Star Trek, all the films and all the TV series. So the special effects is really amazing. And icons like Elizabeth Taylor and all of those sort of things. So I did further training with the Westmores. Um, after doing that, I came back to Melbourne and I started doing film and I just found it's, it's a very finicky world and it really wasn't for me. So from there, I started to do fashion. Um, this is a shoot that I did recently. Um, as I said, I started my, my makeup training back in the year 2000, so I've been doing it for a long time. Um, these days I work with photographers like Peter Coulson, he's won Fashion Photographer of the Year about four times. Um, I do loads of weddings, um, I'm heavily booked with weddings. Um, and I also have my own school, so I have, my school is southeast of Melbourne and um, I teach very small class sizes, um, people that want to become professional hair and makeup artists. Um, so yeah, between my school and my painting, with my painting, about five years ago, I got invited to um, exhibit in the London Biennale. So since then, I've been doing four international art shows a year as well. Um, so those do tend to keep me busy. But if I go back to uh, when I first finished my training with Peter, when I came back down to Melbourne, I started nursing again, just to, because you don't get out of a course and go straight onto a multi-million dollar film set, unfortunately. So I went back to nursing and I realized that while I could create special, uh, you know, like burns, bruising, scarring, all that kind of thing, that anyone that actually had those problems, there didn't seem, certainly in Melbourne anyway, there didn't seem to be anyone helping to cover those up rather than create them, actually cover them up. So from there, I started to do paramedical makeup um, so anything from rosacea, uh, bruising, uh, scarring, all this kind of thing. And this is what I love about makeup. Just the power of makeup I find is really huge. The ability to sort of 
cover up something so severe like that and really not be able to see it. Um, this sort of thing, chest scar. Also, just as a side note, you know, when you see women on the red carpet, they we have to make them up head to toe makeup. Whatever skin is exposed um, is made up, and you can kind of see how much age this lady's 55, how much age it takes off the skin as well, just being able to even everything out. Um, same here, broken capillaries, um, and as you can see, it can be anywhere on the body that we work. And of course, vitiligo, which is what, what we're here to talk about. So with vitiligo, in my experience as a makeup artist, I would say it's probably one of the harder things to cover up. Um, you would sort of think logically that white would be easier than anything else. In fact, I sort of find darker things are easier to cover than, than vitiligo. But not to be disheartened by that, it's really just more um, mucking around getting the actual skin colour right. Um, so when I've got vitiligo patients, I usually allow an hour to an hour and a half consultation with them because it really is just finessing that colour to really get the best match that I can. I'm just going to go back to me for a second. Um, getting, getting the best match that I can. Um, so the things that I need to consider, are the first things I need to know, whereabouts on the body is it? Because wear and tear is a really big factor in terms of makeup. If something's on, if it's on the hands, elbows, knees, those are high wear and tear areas, particularly hands, because with your hands, not only are you touching things all the time, but your fingers themselves, the skin on the fingers is, you know, bending and fingers are a little bit wrinkly. Um, so that can wear the makeup down a tiny bit more. So whereabouts on the body will determine what product I, I decide to use as to what will take the most uh, wear and tear. Um, also, how big is the area as well? Because another factor that a lot of people don't realise is when it's a larger area on the body, what tends to happen is skin change. We don't just have a uniform colour of skin, unfortunately. So if, for example, if someone's got vitiligo, say going from their, their shoulder across the collarbone and up their neck, the colour of the skin, surrounding skin on the neck is much lighter than the skin is on the shoulder. So I need to grade the colour. Um, and I can definitely teach um, someone how to do it. It's not hard. It, the real, like I said, the hardest part is really getting that, that, that match right. Um, so if I just go back to sharing my screen again. Um, we go back to this one. So I find with vitiligo, with this one, this is a young girl's knee. She's only about 10, this one. And you can see the colour of the skin. She's quite a lot. She's got a beautiful olive skin. So there's a big contrast between the vitiligo and her skin tone. The most effective way I've found to knock out the vitiligo is when the skin is darker, I need like a background colour first. So normally it takes me mm, about two to three colours to to match the surrounding skin exactly. Of the darker of those colour, the darkest colour of that mix is what I will put over the vitiligo itself. And the real trick that I found that works is, see how this has got a perimeter around it? The trick is with that background colour just to go within the perimeter. If I start putting that background colour out into the surrounding skin, then that white just comes straight back up again. So what I'll do is go right through the perimeter of the vitiligo. In this case, it's knees. So this is a high wear and tear area. So this would be sealed. I won't worry about going into what products I use because you've got some really amazing reps going to talk about what they do. So I'll let them talk about their, their products. Um, so then I would seal that, hold it onto the skin, and then I would come back in with the surrounding skin colour. And then the trick with that is I work from the centre of the vitiligo outwards into the surrounding skin. So when you see it over here, you can't see where the makeup starts and stops. That's really the trick. You know, my, my aim is to draw the eye away from where the edge of the vitiligo compared to the edge of the surrounding skin. And then that would be sealed as well. Um, so it will really hold up. Um, when... When the skin is mottled, or if it's an extensive area of vitiligo, I've had patients where it's a little bit mottly, or they're having treatment, it's starting to, the pigmentation is starting to come back into the skin. 
that can be a little bit more trickier because if they're all you've got now you're dealing with all different shades so what i tend to find then is um, sometimes it gives a better finish if you go with the median color like the, the mid-tone of the color so look at the lightest color of the skin look at the darkest color and go in between and then just um, do a blend over the top to get a perfect um, coverage um, sometimes you run the risk of doing a really heavy makeup you're getting rid of the vitiligo but now the makeup is much more noticeable rather than the vitiligo so you're kind of getting rid of one problem creating another um, to me aesthetically as a makeup artist my aim is always for the most beautiful result something that's just not going to draw the eye um, so in in the situation of a more mottled effect I find yeah getting that mid-tone and going through I can also I also teach patients particularly when it is a larger area you can always finesse um, the color as well so I'll usually make up the, the main color and then of the colors that make up that main color the darkest color and the lightest color can then be you know if you're working on an area that's slightly darker than the main body of the vitiligo then you just add a bit of the darker color or if you need to go lighter then just add a little bit of the lighter um, sometimes I also find even conventional makeup or just a little bit of bronzer does the trick. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific product. Um, so I find each patient is different um, and I really can't tell until I'm with them and can really get a good look at the area um, and, and start to work from there. Um, the other thing that is really important for me is lighting. Um, I really need daylight to work in. Um, I go to this slide you can see here this is exactly the same makeup but in two different lights in daylight which is a cool white color that will give me the truest read of what the skin tone is and then I can match accurately to that working in the artificial light or yellow light I can't get a true reading but it's also important for patients to understand that no matter what makeup it is whether I'm covering vitiligo or whether I'm doing a beauty makeup um, the makeup will change from lighting to lighting. Um, in my next slide, you'll see that here. This is Anne Hathaway. You can see here, this is really warm evening light, which is quite a lot more dramatic looking. And here it's under white, cool light. Completely, it looks completely different. So I find sometimes you've got to be prepared that um, when you're walking into different lights, sometimes the makeup may look slightly different or the vitiligo may look slightly noticeable, whereas in other lights, completely can't see it at all. So lighting makes a huge difference. And, um, and that's why on film sets and things like that, lighting crews get paid a fortune. And that's why you see them running around with those great big white screens, bouncing light, trying to get rid of shadows and things like that. But in real life, obviously we don't have a lighting crew running around with special lights all around us. Um, so that can play a big factor in it as well, I find. Um, yeah, uh, what else to tell you? Um, I also want to show this slide as well. I really love this. I'm not sure if any of you have seen this model. Her name's Winnie Harlow. Um, the fashion world is really brutal. And um, what I love about her, I mean, you can see she's got extensive vitiligo. It's everywhere, um, you know, arms, particularly on her face, legs. And it just is really impressive because it's really brought a lot of awareness to people what vitiligo is. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Michael Jackson had vitiligo. Um, and I think with Winnie Harlow, I would say vitiligo is what has made her successful. If we were to cover all of this with makeup, she would become just another model. There's nothing to distinguish her. She's stunning, but she would be just another model. And having worked in the makeup world for as long as I have, you know, beautiful girls, they're a dime a dozen, to be honest. Um, and the makeup world, like I said, it's quite brutal and self-confidence. So for her to, to have been this successful, to be a Victoria's Secret model, um, which is the pinnacle of lingerie modeling. Um, with, that, with that extensive vitiligo, I just love that, you know, she just embraces it, runs with it, and it's really what's sort of made her successful. But um, yeah, just a side thing there. But um, 
Yeah, so I suppose for me as a makeup artist, my, my thing is um, really getting that colour match um, as close as I can. As from a patient point of view, that's the hard part. That's what, I'm, that's what you're paying me for. Once I've done that, I can teach you how to um, apply it. The application is really easy. The, these products are super high in pigment, um, so they adhere to skin really well. The colour payoff is really good. The ability to really finesse the, the um, skin colour is there. Um, so it's, it, you know, with what's available now um, with these products, it's really amazing from whether you're airbrushing something on or whether it's a cream or whatever. There's so many products available that, you know, as makeup artists, we've got an arsenal to be able to really work with you and work out what's going to be the best thing for you. Also comes down to how much time as a patient that you want to spend covering this. Um, you know, some patients I find aren't that bothered. It's sort of like, yeah, I just want to take the edge off it, you know, just so it's not that noticeable. And I find other patients, you know, just knock it out completely. I don't want to see it at all. Um, so that's a consideration as well when I'm working with patients. But um, yeah, so... That's, that's my story and what I do and my background. And um, yeah, no, it's just the, the things that you can do with makeup are really unlimited. And certainly in the vitiligo world, there is so much available to you um, to do it. So yeah, that's me done. That's great. Thank you so much, Joe, for sharing us your story, your experiences. Um, I was wondering if there was anyone who had any questions or any comments uh, for Joe. Lois, Joe, thank you. That was great. Um, like the 10 year old patient in your pictures, I also have dark skin so, and have extensive bit of LIGO pretty much everywhere and find it really hard to get that blend and that coverage and have tried everything known to mankind, in, in, including vegetable dyes and <laughs> <laughs> I've done it all, fake tans, any sort of makeup that's available to me um, and it is a real challenge. So it's, it's great to know, like I'm thinking if I ever had a really special event, I'd love to come and see you and spend a day getting made up by you. That would be wonderful. Oh, any time, Faye, any time. <laughs> um, I, may I say something? I agree with you, Faye. I, I'm Nada here. The, I'm the Secretary of the Vitiligo Association. I also have Vitiligo, but it's not, not terribly expensive. Um, I have tried all my life so many different products, including dyes and all sorts of things. Um, you mentioned colour matches is the hardest challenge and yep. look, I agree. I find even with normal facial makeup, I find it impossible to get a match. I've got to mix and blend and the same with any products I use to, to cover my, my vitiligo. So yeah, that definitely is for me the greatest challenge. Yeah, I agree, Dada. I think that's probably the most imperative thing is just getting that colour match exactly right because that's really, you can have the best product that's going to hold on for, you know, three months, Not you know what I mean? But if the colour is wrong, it's so noticeable, yeah. Yes, and the other point about the lighting, of course, you know, when we're out in daylight, it's going to look incredibly different. And the hard-wearing areas, that, that really resonated with me as well because mine's on my toes, my fingers and my elbows. Knees, <sighs> elbows, sorry. Knees, fingers, elbows um, and toes. So the hard working areas. So it makes it even more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you. That, that was an absolutely brilliant presentation. And it's so great to learn so much about you and your incredible work as an artist and a makeup artist. And like Faye, if I was ever going anywhere special, <laughs> I would absolutely love you to do my makeup. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you, Jo. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so, Jo, we just have a question from Heather in the chat box. Um, so, I'll just read it out. So, Heather was um, wondering if we can find you online if we're interested 
in an appointment with you. Um, she's, uh, Heather's currently living in Italy, so she's just asking for the future, perhaps a trip back home. Yeah, absolutely. My website is joannablair.com.au. Um, you can find me online or, yeah, or even if you just Google Joanna Blair makeup artist, all my info will come up, my email, my website address. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, and sorry, Manisha, did you have a question? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so I will see if I'm actually able to post Joe's website um, onto the chat box and um, I'm sure uh, Joe will be more than happy to um, be contacted. Contact yep, there I am. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, great. Thank you so much, Joe. That was fantastic. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, anyone, any final comments for Joe? Great. Thanks again, Joe. So um, we, uh, on that note, we'll move on to our next speaker, um, who is Polly uh, Gottschew. Polly is the founder of um, uh, Vitilla Glow. She is from the UK and Polly herself has had Vitiligo for many years and she designed um, Vitiligo herself to camouflage specifically um, for Vitiligo. So I'm sure she'll let us know all about it. Oh, Polly, I think you're on mute. I'll just un unmute you. Yeah. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes? Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Uh, good evening to everybody in Australia. Um, and it's quite, a, well, fairly early in the morning here in the UK. So excuse me, because I'm, I'm literally sitting in my bedroom. Um, my name's Polly. I'm 51 years old. I have had vitiligo for 25 years, so nearly half my life now. Um, my vitiligo uh, began in my 20s um, and it's had a massive effect on my life. Um, up until I first developed vitiligo, I was a complete sun worshipper. I absolutely loved going on sunshine holidays, tanning my skin on sunbeds, um, wearing strappy tops and, you know, exposing my skin. Um, and all that changed um, when I developed vitiligo. Um, my vitiligo spread very rapidly. I probably lost nearly 60 to 70% of my pigment now. So I really struggle because I'm very, very patchy, completely face, body, hands, feet, elbow, everywhere. So um, for me, um, one of the first things I did was I stopped going in the sun, um, which was hard, but because um, I'm half Swiss, I've got quite olive skin. Um, my skin tans very easily. So as soon as um, my skin tans, my white patches look even worse. Um, so, and, and that makes it harder to cover. So um, that's one of the first things I did. So that was a big lifestyle change. The other thing I did was I started to cover up clothes wise. I rarely walk, I think like I watch it on stage something later. I wouldn't have even worn a kit like this, wore a long sleeve top, um, trousers, never wore shorts or short skirt because my knees, my feet, my shins were all patchy. So how I sort of dress changed. Um, and as my pigment disappeared, my pigmented skin, so did my confidence basically. Um, and and I, I became, you know, very um, self-conscious um, of myself. So it was a real struggle for me, and it still is having uh, vitiligo. Um, so like everybody else, probably, I started searching for the perfect product or any product that was going to help me cover my skin, help the patches blend in. So I felt less um, conscious uh, about myself. And, you know, I spent years fake tanning, using different camouflage products, using foundations, um, and nothing 
nothing really worked that well for me. Um, so it, again, it was just a real struggle. And in the end, I, I became sort of a slave every day to uh, using this whole range of products um, and spending hours just so that I felt covered up enough to leave the house and people wouldn't stare at me and say oh why, why have you got white patches is that is that catching you know I've had all sorts of comments so um yeah it, it was a real labor of love trying to keep keep myself covered up all the time um and anyway so one thing after another I got to the point where I literally thought that, you know, you know, I, I can't carry on like this for the rest of my life. I need a product that is quick and easy to use, that doesn't rub off, that looks natural, um, that can put on large areas of the body um, as well as the face. And so in the end, I, I kind of came up with, with an idea. Um, I'm not a chemist or a dermatologist or anything like that. I just knew what I needed from a product. And um, it took several years and it's been a roller coaster of a journey. Um, it's had its ups and its downs. Um, but I've eventually um, managed to create a product called Vitiligo. I don't know if you can see this small bottle here. Um, and over the years, we've spent a lot of time developing the formula, uh, increasing the shade range, developing different products. So um, it really does say what it does on the tin. It's uh, very natural looking. It's quick and easy to put on. It's rub proof, uh, water resistant, um, so much so that people were struggling to remove it. So we bought out a remover. Uh, which you literally can wipe over your skin, it breaks it down and it removes it. And um, a bit similar uh, to the lady who was speaking before, um, my, my pigmented skin is all different colours on my body and face. So my legs are very, my pigmented skin on my legs are very pale because they very rarely see the sunshine, where my arms are really quite dark because obviously you're out and about and you're, you're catching the rays, even though I wear a sunblock. So, uh, you know, I was using sort of different shades and maybe mixing them together. But actually what I realised was um, it would be easier to have the same shade that that suited my uh, skin, but I was able to add either a drop of this glow dark or a drop of the glow light. And that adjusts the shade, half a shade lighter or half a shade darker. And that just works really well because it stops me having to faff about mixing different shades together. I just use the one shade and I can darken it or I can lighten it. So that's, that's only just come out in the last sort of uh, I think about a year now we've had these drops so they that they work really well um, so yeah so that's kind of my story and the sort of um, how vitiligo came about um, like I said it's had some ups and its downs you know I had the idea um, in 2012 nobody was interested people who haven't got vitiligo don't really care about the people who have um because you know it's not life-threatening um it's just a cosmetic um sort of condition you know people aren't that sort of interested where for people like myself who've got it it it, it really is you know life-changing um and can take away your confidence so um out of sheer, sheer determination, I knocked on lots of manufacturing doors um, and eventually somebody in Denmark said they'd make it and that's when Vitiligo first came out. Um, the formula was okay, but it, it, it didn't really last that long. It wasn't as rub proof of, as I wanted. It wasn't as water resistant as I wanted. Um, so again, you know, I just knew I had to keep going and keep improving the formula. 
Um, I had a lucky break. I ended up on, I don't know if Australia has this, Dragon's Den, um, which is a program for entrepreneurs um, where you seek investment. I went on that in 2015. Um, I got two offers of investment, which was fabulous. I was able to use the money um, to really invest in this new formula and I, I can honestly say, you know, it, it, it's probably as good as I'm going to get it. It's, like I said, very natural. It doesn't look cakey or makeup-y. It really is rub proof and water resistant. Um, and it does the job. You know, you can apply it pretty quickly. Uh, I think the difference, one of the main differences on application is traditional camouflage products are are really good for people who have maybe a scar or a burn or one contained area um, which you can spend time on sort of getting the match and, 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 and sort of applying it to that one area. However, for people like myself who've got extensive vitiligo from head to toe, you just haven't got the time to do that. So the good thing about vitiligo is um, I always say to people, um, you know, Apply it in a thin leg, so little goes a long way. A bottle will last you a long time because it's so highly pigmented. Apply it to your white patches first, but then you blend it over the rest of the area. So I don't know if you can see, I've got pretty white hands <laughs> compared to the rest of me. So what I would do is I would apply vitiligo to my hands and to my wrist, and I would start bringing it up where I've got lighter patches. So in a, by the end of it, my whole lower arm would be covered um, in vitiligo. Obviously, I'd have more on my hand and I'd blend it very gradually up to my elbow. Um, and that works really well because then you don't have to have an exact match. If you're using it over a larger area and not just on the white patches, it, it tends to work better so um, because I've been to skin camouflage um, practitioners I've been to the Red Cross uh, and traditionally they just used to cover you know each each patch but I, you know unless you've got an exact match it, it can make it look worse where with something like vitiligo you're covering a whole arm or a whole leg it's quicker it's easier and you don't have to have that exact match I'm going to try and share my screen with you. Is that okay? Let me see if I can do it. Um, okay. Hang on, let me just pop my glasses on. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay, so I don't know if you can... Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Share screen. Here we go. And you all see that. Has it come up yet? Yes. Yes, yeah. Okay, yes. Brilliant. So this is a short video about how to apply vitiligo. Hopefully it will play for you. Here we go. Can you hear it? Apply vitiligo. I always shake the bottle well. I remove the lid. Some people like to use sponges, some people like to use brushes. I personally prefer to use my fingertips. All you need to do is pump out a 10 pence piece size into your palm. A little does go a long way. When applying vitiligo, always apply it in thin layers to your white patches first. And don't forget, a little does go a long way. So you feel you've got enough coverage and then blend a little bit over the rest of the area.
a case of that. That's kind of how I would um, do my arm. Um, as, as people have mentioned already, hands are a big issue. Um, I, I've got completely white hands now and completely white feet. Um, and, and that's kind of really noticeable to me. Um, so covering your hands uh, for me, it's really important. And also being able to wash your hands without having to reapply the product every time you wash your hands. And we always kind of recommend that once you put your vitiligo on, you apply soap to the palm of your hands, you rub them together, and then you rinse under a tap. And you'll see that vitiligo is so water resistant, the water just runs off, and then you pat dry or you can use a hand sanitizer. So I'll just show you the video for the hands. So like many people, I have vitiligo on my hands. In fact, my hands are completely white now. So to put vitiligo on my hands, I just give it a quick wipe with the prep remover. making sure I've got nice clean fresh skin to right. okay. okay again just pump I'm sorry it must be the internet connection a very small amount into my hand again I tend to use my hands and not a brush I just put the sligo onto my hands, making sure I get in between my fingers, and then I blend it up towards my wrist. Again, just building it up in thin layers. There we go. I, okay. Is that, did everybody get to see that okay? Yes, it was good. That was good, thank okay. you. Yeah, so, um, so that's kind of it. So on my website, there is lots of videos on how to apply vitiligo. There's a shade chart where there's short video clips of the different shades actually being applied to different skin colors. So from somebody with very light porcelain skin, uh, medium skin, dark skin, black skin. Um, so you can actually see the products going onto the skin. Um, we also offer um, a colour matching service. We, we you know, are quite happy if people send in pictures of their pigmented skin taken in natural light and we'll do our best to advise you as to which shades might be the best for you. Um, we're also here just to support people as well for for us at Vitiliglo, it's not just about selling a product, it's about um, sharing stories, experiences, trying to help people build their confidence. Um, we run uh, quite a lot of campaigns on Instagram and it's not just about covering your skin. We've read a recent one about body confidence and all, all our images were of people like Winnie Harlow um, and other people who, who don't cover their patches and feel confident in themselves. Because what I've realized over the years um, is that not everybody feels like me. Not everybody feels they have to cover their skin. Um, and we really support those people. Um, both my sons have vitiligo and um, my eldest son is mixed race so he has very dark um, skin and he has very very noticeable patches around his eyes on his neck mouth uh, his fingers are sort of started to go white um, and you know luckily he has completely the different attitude to me in life he he embraces his vitiligo he's proud of his patches um he doesn't cover up um and that's fantastic and i'm really proud of him for that however 
that's not how I feel and that's not how a lot of my customers feel. So for me, it's all about choice. You know, if you choose not to cover your patches, that is fantastic and we're here to support you. Um, but if you do choose to cover your patches, then we just want a product that we deserve, a product that really is what it, you know, does what it says and is, is as good as it can be. Um, and, and that's what I've spent the last sort of um, eight years doing really. Um, and like I said, you know, it's, it's been a labour of love. It's had its ups and its downs, um, but we've sort of got there in the end. Uh, and, you know, and, and that's it, really. So I don't know if anyone's got any questions. A million. <laughs> Polly, thanks. That's amazing. I saw it. I had a look at your website and the product looks amazing. As I said earlier, I've tried just about everything there is known to mankind to try. I think the thing that I've landed on over the last 10 or 15 years is a product called Microskin, which you may or may not have heard of or come across. So I have been using Microskin for a long, long time. I think um, I actually should have shares in the business. I don't know if Julie's on the call, but... <laughs> um, how would your, can I ask, and I, I hate to pit one product against another because I do love micro skin and what it's been able to do for me, but I think that there are, are times, definitely for me with, with micro skin, where it can feel a little bit kind of cakey and how, do you, how would you kind of compare your product to something like micro skin? I've never used Microskin. Um, I've heard it's a great product. I've heard it's quite expensive because they go through a, a whole colour matching process with you. Um, but I've heard it get, yes. give, you know, you get good results from it. I can only talk about the products I've used, which is things like Derma Blend, Bail, Cover Mark, um, the sort of traditional camouflage products. Um, you know, Vitiligo, for me, and for a lot of people um, we sell worldwide, it works and it, it does a good job. Um, but all product, no product is perfect for everybody. And over yeah. the years, I've had to kind of come to terms with that, you know, because naively, when I first put <laughs> Vitiligo onto the market, I was like, oh my God, this is it. You know, it works for me. It's going to work for everybody. <laughs> but actually, that's not the case. And, you know, for some customers, they, they, they don't get on with it or they can't find a good match or color match or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's horses for courses um yeah. it, you know it's one of those things it's a bit like fake tan you yeah. know some people are really good at applying it and it looks great and natural some people aren't and it can look really awful um mm. so it's the same as vitiligo you know some people get on with it and apply it and, and say it's the best thing ever some people it yeah. just doesn't work for us and i've had to yeah. learn to accept that over the years if it can help a small amount of people then that's great um you know yeah. uh, i think the difference from i think the difference with vitiligo glow is um you know it is so highly pigmented that as you can see you need a very small amount which covers a large area um and you know if you go onto the website you'll see where i actually rub it with a, a white tissue and once it's on it's on it's it's not actually coming off you know, I haven't actually applied any today onto my hands and arms, but I'm going to before I go to the gym. And I'm mm -hmm. going to go and do an hour's body pump class. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to be hot. And I can guarantee you that vitiligo will still be on at the end of the class. Um, yeah. You can go swimming in it as well. You know, it is water resistant. And like mm -hmm. I said, um, you know, the formula got so good that actually people were kind of having to use an exfoliator and scrub at their skin to remove it. And that's why we had to bring out the remover because that broke it down and, and removed it without people having to spend ages trying to get it off. Um, I think one of the big things for me is I can, I can wear lighter colored clothing now and strappy tops and I, I can wear shorts again and not worry that everything I sit on or touch 
it's going to transfer to. Of course, you know, when you're, it's a hot day, a bit like fake tan, you know, on the inside of your clothes, you might get a little bit come off. But on the whole, it, it, once it's on, it's, it's pretty much on for the day. Um, and we do recommend that people take it off and, and reapply it daily. It, you know, you should let your skin breathe and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. great. Thank you. I'm dying to try it now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question, if possible. Hi, Hi Polly. Yeah? That was really interesting. I haven't heard of Vitali Glow and that was really interesting and really good as a product. So I just wanted to ask you, first question was, so basically you don't need a powder. You don't need to set it with a powder or anything. It just sets itself. Yeah, and that was one of the things, um, like I said, I'd gone down the route of traditional camouflage makeup. So you have to put a primer on so that the shade you use then sticks to the skin adheres to the skin and then you use a setting spray or powder well that's three layers straight away and so you know no matter how good you are at applying it it can look very makeupy it can look cakey um so that was one of the things i definitely wanted to get away from one because that takes quite a, a long period of time and two you know because the overall result wasn't brilliant for me so uh, vitiligo actually has a setting powder in it um, and it also has the unique formula so that it sticks to the skin so when you first apply it, it feels quite um, sort of creamy silky and then all of a sudden it, you, you have to work quite quickly because once it's dried yeah. that's yeah. it it's dried and then like I said you could get you know a tissue you could wipe over your arm and you'd have very little come off you know, once it's on and it's dried, that's it for the day. You, you have no worries about reapplication. So I'm a camouflage practitioner, so I don't have vitiligo. The other thing that I wanted to ask was, um, I know for the other products, the ones you mentioned that the, are the general sort of NHS products, Veil, Dermacolor, Keramask, um, they are safe to say, stay on the skin for a couple of days. Now, some people choose to leave it on there for a few days and then um, just reapply it, maybe not reapply, the, especially if they've got large areas, not have to reapply everything, but just cover up smaller patches. Do, do you find that you just take yours off on a daily basis just because you, you need to or just because you feel like um, you, you, it's a good thing to do to have to take everything off at the end of the day and then to reapply it? It's a really individual thing. A lot of my customers yeah. say that they do leave it on for a couple of days. Because I, I go to the gym a lot, I shower and, and, and you know, and, and whatever daily in the morning, in the evening. So for me, I've just got used to putting it on and taking it off again, then putting it back on. But other people, you know, have told me that they mm -hmm. put it on and leave it on. And then sometimes they reapply over the top of it. So yeah. Yeah. again, you have to let people do what they want with a product. Um, it's all about sort of experimenting, trying different techniques. You know, I use my fingers because it's quick and easy. Yeah. Lots of yeah. my customers use sponges or brushes. And it's really a personal choice. Um, mm -hmm. How, you know how you sort of apply it and, and how what sort of result you're trying to get I mean for me um like so I haven't really put any vitiligo on yet so I, I feel still a little bit patchy but what I have used last night was the Saint-Tropez gradual tanner because my arms are quite tanned at the moment even you know I've been away for the weekend and it was nice weather I wore a sunblock but my pigmented skin catches it so easily mm. so I just I just applied the gradual tanner onto the inside of my arms because that's where they're really white but of course it hasn't taken as well it never does you know gradual tanners never turn your skin uh, the same colour as your pigmented skin. So today, before I go to the gym, I'm going to put on this shade, which is the tan medium. Now, if I hadn't put any gradual tanner on and my skin was just kind of a uh, normal, I would have probably used either the tan light or the medium. And, and in the winter, I use the medium warm. I go right down. So again, it really depends on what time of year it is, whether I've been out in the sun or not, to what shade I might use. And like I said, you know, 
I will probably <laughs> add a drop of the glow light just to sort of lighten the tan medium slightly. But on my legs, to bring them up to the same colour as my arms, I'd add a drop of the glow dark. Dark, so yeah. you know, again, you just have to play around with it really mm -hmm. it's good yeah, it's really I, good. I, I think you know because <laughs> i'm so used to doing it it really is so quick and easy now i can mm -hmm. literally you know put that on and be out the door in sort of five to ten minutes where and before I think that's, it would take me hours yeah. and i think that's one of the most important things for people is you, it's got to be done five to ten minutes in the morning with their normal daily routine because they don't want to spend and that nobody's going to spend an hour they just won't use whatever product it is so i think that sounds really interesting i'm glad to have um come along and heard about that thank you thank you for me it was just a case of okay i've got bits of lego it is really affecting my life it is really affecting my confidence what i wear where i go what i do I can't carry on like this for the rest of my life, feeling like this and using all these products every day. It was costing me a fortune. It was taking me too long to get out the door. I had to plan every time I went anywhere. And for me, it just, it, it just had to happen. I had to have this product that I could use daily that, you know, would make me feel okay about myself again. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Polly. I think we have one question from the chat box okay. from Manisha. Yeah. Um, so uh, how long does an application last for and does the skin look dry, uh, look or feel dry upon application? Sorry, say that again. How long does it last for? And... How, yes, sorry. How long does an application last for and does yeah. the skin look or feel dry upon application? No. Okay. So an application, I mean, I put mine on first thing in the morning and take it off last thing at night and don't have to re reapply in the day. So that's great. Um, like we've just talked about, some people leave it on overnight. It, it's really a personal choice and then maybe apply over the top of it. Um, it, and again, a bottle can last you. It, it depends on how often you use it and how, more sort of areas but a little really does go a long way and we always say you know don't put a great big thick layer on always put a thin layer on and if you need another layer a second thin layer and then blend over the rest of the area I have a question if that's okay oh yeah uh, Jennifer is that okay yes of course yeah please go ahead I'll Thank you. I wasn't sure what the protocol was. I didn't want to interrupt anyone. Um, have you ever used fake bake? The I American, have, yeah. yeah, yeah, because I've, it struck I've me. Used, it I've struck used me used that every fake tan product on the market. Because when I first got vitiligo twenty odd years ago, that was kind of in fashion to be yeah. as orange and as brown as you could be um yes. gradual tanners fake tans work okay in the summer to sort of take the edge off your white patches but they never turn your white patches as brown as your pigmented skin or as tans as your pigmented skin also um it does tend to come off your white patches a lot quicker so after a couple of days of wearing a fake tan, I can end up looking worse because it'll have stayed on my pigmented skin but worn off my patches. So um, it, it, for years I thought, oh, it was the answer, but actually it wasn't. Um, and so now, like I said, in the summer, I tend to use a mixture of a gradual tanner with vitiligo over the top. But in the winter, I don't want to walk around looking fake tanned or tanned. So I go to a lighter shade of vitiligo and use that. Yes. The, the actual product, though, Fake Bake, have you tried that? With I the have. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, some... Some, again, and it's personal preference, some work better than others. There's quite a new one in the UK called Skinny Tan, um, and that works quite well. Um, Saint-Tropez, the original, um, and I've kind of sort of 
gone on and off it over the years. Now they've brought out this new watermelon gradual tanner. I'm back onto it again because it smells nice and it gives a very natural, it doesn't look too orangey, where some of the Saint-Tropez tans are really quite dark and orangey. Um, and it tends to wear off quite nicely. It doesn't go patchy when it wears off. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, even though I've got it on, I still feel patchy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So once I put my layer of uh, tan medium on in a bit before I go to the gym, I'll feel confident enough to wear my gym kit and, and not feel like I'm drawing attention to myself. So is the bitchy, bitchy um, blue, is that a, a cream? cream makeup or what's its texture? Um, it's, it's an in-between, all I can describe is in-between a traditional camouflage product, but the sort of um, look of a, a really good foundation. So like very natural, like you, you know, you just, it doesn't sit on the skin uh, like a traditional camouflage makeup does. It, it really does sort of look very natural. Um, you if you go to... onto the website, you'll see lots of before and after pictures. So uh -huh. I think I've had a and look you're... at it. Yeah, I had a look at it a while ago. I'm just trying to recall when you add the drop. At what point do you add that? Do you add it direct to the so your palm of your I hand? Always, yeah, I put it into the palm of my hand and then add a drop. Mix it with my finger round and round. Ah, uh, with the drop. Yeah. I start my long process <laughs> of doing my body, yeah. <laughs> and are the drops then liquid, I guess? Yes, yeah. And again, one of these bottles would probably last you a good year. <laughs> you just yeah. need the tiniest amount uh, to adjust the shade. So it comes with a little spatula and you literally just need to dab that spatula on um, to, and, and mix it with the shade and you'll see it adjusts it half shade darker. Yeah, because I found the, the oh, fake yeah. fake. Um, I didn't use the drops. I ended up just diluting it with water and I found that gave me a, a much better result. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just interested in how the textures compared. So yours is more a makeup than, than a liquid tanner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Definitely. It's not a gradual tanner. It won't tan your skin. It's got no DHA in it. Um, it, like I said, for me, it's the coverage of a camouflage cream, but um, more natural looking. Wow. You know, you, like I said, there's no. It's the the setting powder um, and the um, the pigments and everything combined um, give it that sort of unique formula. Uh, which has took, like I said, since 2012 to develop and with, you know, keep on in trying to improve it. And I think now it's probably as good as it's going to get. Can I ask a question, Polly? Thank you, Polly. You're welcome. Um, sorry. Okay. Can I ask a question? Can you hear me? Of course, yeah. Um, so I have a very spotted all over my body spotted can you hear right. me you keep dropping in and out a little bit oh sorry it's my internet um my vitiligo is very spotted very spotted and oh so is it so i could see that you're applying it on your hands because you can apply it big patches of your hands what about small patches yes if you go onto the website you'll see my son has um he has mixed race skin dual heritage skin so he's got very dark skin and he's got spots on his neck and again you'll see um that we've just sort of dabbed it on and then blended it slightly over the the, the the, the trick with vitiligo is, like I said, you apply it to your white patches first, but then you always blend it over the rest of the area. Um, you know, you're not just sticking to those patches. Or uh, unless you get an exact match, it can end up looking worse. So how do you get the exact match? Because I've never been... 
to get an exit Sorry. thread from no what i'm saying is if you if you apply it to your white patches first and then blend it over the area you don't have to have an exact match you know you can have a good match and it'll it'll still look blended in um but if you're just putting it on your patches then you have to have an exact match because you're not going to cover the rest of the area so if you have i have it all over my body uh-huh can you get me so uh, i think for me a spray is easier to use then um because if you yeah it's of, personal choice so do you have a spray is yours a spray um but i have it all over my body too um like i said you know completely on the inside of my arms i've got no pigment on my chest area no pigment on my hips no pigment on my shins my knees my feet um so i have to cover large areas under my arms as well um so it, it, it's, it's, it's almost really, easy yeah, yeah, maybe i don't cover my whole body every day i cover the bits that show mostly <laughs> you know so like today i'm going to the gym i've got leggings on but a, a bra bralette so i will cover my arms and my shoulders and a little bit of my chest if i was going to uh wear shorts then i would do my legs <laughs> so you know it depends what i'm wearing and where i'm going to which bits i cover and how much vitiligo i use yeah I, I i i cannot cover so much with us i've got too many like then, even then maybe for somebody like you a gradual tanner or a spray tan would be a better option yeah. i've tried those as well it's it's never fit uh, it never matches exactly right yeah it's really hard yeah. and then again you it's hard to find something that works for you. It's it is it's hard. Mm. All right. Any other questions for Polly? Thank you so much, Polly. That was incredibly informative. Um, and um, I will just post your link to the website just in the chat box um, if anyone is interested um, and uh, Paul, I just like to say I, I really like the message that um, you said about you know it's all that choice um, for people who want to cover or people who don't want to cover um, so yeah that's just, just fantastic and thank you so much for letting us know all about um, Vitaligo I, I definitely learned a lot about the product um, so yeah uh, any final comments or questions for Polly no, just thank you for trying it. I just wanted to say we haven't tried it. I'm Jill. Um, I work with Vanessa Jane Davis, who is uh, from Skin Camouflage Services here in the UK. It's yours is not a product that we've tried either. So a bit like Ray, we're looking forward to it. It's great. Brilliant. Okay. Get in touch get in touch and we'll uh, send you some product to try that'd be wonderful thank you very much you're welcome oh so i've just got one more question from anisha will there be a restock on your website soon quite a few things have been sold out we're expecting a delivery next week it's been incredibly busy the last few months obviously like the whole world went quite quiet during the initial lockdown um at, but actually now since restrictions have been relaxed people are going out a bit more we've you know we've seen this huge surge in uh, sales so we we're sort of um hoping to be restocked with everything uh next week yeah um just n another question uh from <laughs> other products pricey or affordable okay so unfortunately because you know we're uk based um we would have to ship from the uk to australia and we we do i sell i sell quite a, uh to quite a few people in australia so there is that shipping fee on top of the 
price of a bottle. Um, if you're lucky enough to be based in the UK, then obviously that it makes it a lot cheaper. Um, I don't know how much it is in dollars, but a small bottle is 20 UK pounds. A big bottle is 40. Now, you know, for me, I use it every day. Um, and I would say a big bottle would last me, I don't know, probably about six weeks. So, you know, a few, few pounds a week. I, I, I kind of think it's value for money. Um, I, you know, some of the traditional camouflage products are incredibly expensive for very small amounts. And I think that was another thing that I was always disappointed with. You know, when you order from Derma Blend or places like that, they are double the price for half the size. Um, and, and for me, that just wasn't value for money because I have to cover such a large, you know, such large areas of myself. So, I, you know, I've always tried to keep the product as um, value for money as possible for people because, you know, if it, if it can cost people a few pounds a week, then that's great. I, I just don't want to make it expensive that it makes it too, too expensive for people to use on a daily basis and they just keep it for special occasions. Thank you, Polly. That, that was great. Okay. Um, all right. So um, thank you for the questions. Uh, so, thank you. Great. So now we've got our final speaker. Um, so Ray Denman, um, who is from the UK as well. Uh, Ray is a medical tattooist and camouflage practitioner um, with experiences in camouflaging for patients from many different backgrounds. So today, Ray will join us to speak about um, Bell. So please take it away. Thank you, Jennifer. So can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for having me here. It's been an absolute pleasure and I've actually learnt loads from the last couple of speakers. So it's been really good for me. Um, you've already had quite a lot of information given to you. So I'm only going to short speak for a short amount of time and then I'm going to do a demonstration for you. Now, obviously, because of the virus, I couldn't get a patient in to sit with. So I've got lovely Sophie here. Sophie has just got a couple of little patches around her eyes. Well, actually, she's got a patch here around her eye and here. So I'm just going to show you a short demonstration on how to cover that with veil cover cream. So my name's Ray. I'm a skin camouflage practitioner and a medical tattooist. For medical tattooing, I tend to specialise in scars, hypopigmentation, skin grafts and reconstruction. But I've worked with camouflage and its, te its techniques for over 20 years now. I've worked within the NHS offering camouflage services and also running my own private practice. Um, I'm a member of the British Association of Skin Camouflage and I work alongside the Katie Piper Foundation and now have my um, private practice in Harley Street. So I found camouflage is my main base of work is medical tattooing, but camouflage is there for everybody and anybody that you can't do medical tattooing on. I also find it really useful because I don't want to tattoo younger people. Now, I can't tattoo anybody under 18, but even if a 20 year old comes to me, I find it, I mean, you are allowed to tattoo them with medical tattooing, but I find it, it's, they've got such a long rest of their life. And although medical tattooing is semi-permanent in its nature, for some people it does actually last a really long time or it can last forever. So I will always um, say use camouflage for a few years, uh, see if that works for you. Sometimes like Polly um, and Joanne said about having a choice, sometimes actually having a choice of something, because not everybody knows about camouflage still. So sometimes having that choice, even if they decide not to use it, um, that can often help the levels of anxiety. They know that if they're going somewhere and they want to, they have got a product that they can use. I've found it camouflage really useful. It's really safe, really effective um, for covering the visible impact of vitiligo and other visible differences. I've always used all brands of camouflage that are available on the NHS over the years. And I've particularly favored Veil cover cream because I've always found it's malleable, really malleable, really easy to use, I find. Obviously, you know, as Polly was saying, it's different for everybody, and I do, I do recognise that a lot. Um, 
but yeah, I've, I've really liked Vale and they actually approached me because one of the things I noticed about all the ranges, <clears throat> all the main ranges, was they, they missed out a really um, integral part of the colour range. They're brilliant Caucasian colours, good, darker, much darker skin coloured colours, but they had a really lack of Asian skin toned, mixed race skin tones. So I worked together with Vale and we've produced an international range that I find are perfect for the mid-tone skin colours. And I actually took a number of my patients that I'd had over the years and matched their skin tone. And then we came up with a range of nine actual camouflage creams and two camouflage powders. So that's on the Vale website. Um, what I'm going to do is show you this demonstration. Let me just go back onto there. Show you this demonstration and then tell you a little bit about, um, um, sorry, I just can't see it properly on the screen. And then tell you a little bit more about Skin Veil. So I've got a color here called Maya. We've already skin matched. Obviously, that's a different situation where you're actually having to sit with a camouflage practitioner and have a skin match. Then I've always got cocktail sticks around because I find what you don't want to do with any products, and what I like about Polly's product is it's a pump, so you're not going to get your fingers in there. Um, what they all offer now for larger areas is a leg and body cover, which is also a pump, so it's much easier to use. You're not sticking your fingers in the, in the cream, um, and you can apply larger areas much easier. What I used to do when somebody had really large areas was skin match, and then we'd mix it with a bit of moisturizer, and then they could apply it like a moisturizer, and just apply it within a couple of minutes and cover literally all their arms, all their legs. So what I always do if you do have a pot is get a cocktail stick and take a little bit out. You don't even need a pea size amount, you just need a small amount, obviously depending on how much you've got to cover um, and obviously once you get to know your product you'll know how much you need but always use a much smaller amount than you think because what can happen and as I think both the last two practitioners have said is if you put too much on you actually make it more noticeable and the one thing you want to do is take it away so I always put it onto my hand onto the back of my hand some products you might find are a little bit thick especially in the winter again another reason why I like Veil is because it actually doesn't go hard in the winter time whereas some of the other products can go quite hard if you put it onto the back of your hand and just mix it in the warmth from your hand can make it a little bit more malleable. I tend to always use my fingers, especially when it's for vitiligo because of the way that I like to work, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and you've always got your hands and your fingers with you. So if you're out and about and you need to retouch something, you're not having to look for a brush. You're not having to make sure you wash your brushes all the time. So fingers are brilliant. I do also often have these little sponges because I find them really good as well, just for fine tuning the blending. So take a small amount. What I've noticed, especially on this kind of skin, because obviously it's not, ble it's not sinking into her skin because it's just plastic skin. Um, when you leave camouflage on normal skin and you leave it for a couple of minutes, it will start to slowly sink into the pores. So I think the old kind of products, and Veil was made over 70 years ago, the old kind of camouflage products were a lot thicker they were a bit like theatrical makeup and if you apply too much of them they can become quite cakey and that's what nobody wants they don't want to use camouflage to be able to see it they want to use camouflage so that you can't see it so that's what veil if you use a very tiny amount it actually sinks into the pores of your skin make sure you haven't put moisturizer on first because then moisturizer will sink into the pores of the skin, that will fill up your pores and then the camouflage will sit on the top um, and it will just wear off throughout the day. If you're completely clean, you have maybe moisturized at least 30 to 40 minutes before um, then, or the night before and then you apply your camouflage in the morning. So I just put a small amount, um, you can actually see how much I've got, I think, on my finger 
not much at all. I would dab a little bit off just to make sure I haven't got too much. And then I'm just gonna take this side and start, as again, as Polly said, start in the white area. You don't want to start right on the edges. So I'm just gonna start with a real dab and roll. And I've hardly got anything on my finger there. And I'm literally just gonna start with a dab and a roll and apply, it doesn't matter how quickly you do this area of application because it's the fine tune blending. And I understand from obviously people that have got it all over their body, this isn't the right application for you. You would need um, a pump application of a tube with like a leg and body cover so that you can actually rub it on like a moisturizer. This is for smaller areas where you can literally spend just a couple of minutes applying it. What I do, I tend to go into the main areas and then use one of the sponges just to fine tune around the edges. Now I can always apply more. I'm not worried about getting it perfect on that first go at all. And again, as I've said, this is plastic skin, so it doesn't give you the exact result. I do find I need a, a perfect color match. I do find whatever I'm doing, I do need a perfect color match. I do try to get a person, get a patient one color, because I don't think they want to spend time in the morning mixing their colors. So hence why I've brought out that range, because I actually think for Veil and you know what you can do if in a uh, sorry in a consultation i won't necessarily have just veil i would have maybe four different brands um but i tend to favor veil and then i would find one color for the patient you can generally find one color sometimes you have two sometimes they have to mix but generally we'll find one and then you can just add more stand back have a look see where you see the patches are and then just apply a tiny little bit more. Now the reason I'm dabbing and rolling is because I don't want one full colour. Everybody's skin is slightly mottled, it's all different colours within there. If we're only using one, if I was doing it as a makeup I might use a couple of different shades but because we're doing it as a camouflage cream, because we want it to be really quick and easy, I'm finding one shade and then I'm just applying it and blending and then standing back and having a look at whether I think there's little areas. You don't want to sit too close because nobody's going to be looking at you that close. And also when you look in the mirror, you don't need to look at yourself too closely. Stand back about this sort of distance and have a look if you think, right, actually, there's another tiny little bit I can see there. Now I'm pressing, at a kind of, I want this cream to go into the pores, but I don't want to press so hard that I actually hurt my hand. So I'm just pressing firmly, dabbing and rolling, dabbing, dabbing and rolling. I don't know if my lighting has suddenly gone quite dark in here, actually. I'll put that on Sophie, little Sophie here. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so you want to press nice, nice and firmly so that it sinks into the pores, but obviously not too much. Once you've got it on there, you then want to, you then want to actually start going a little bit finer because you don't want to then bring the camouflage off the skin. And that can happen again. If people keep playing with it, you can end up pulling it off of the skin. So I find fingers just to get that kind of, just to get it on there and then a sponge, a throwaway sponge, or you can wash it. These ones are quite good because you can wash them, leave them to dry and, um, and then reuse them. So that's actually, she's just gone a bit darker there. That's again what can happen. And I know Polly mentioned that about getting that kind of halo effect. So you do have to, if you've got very defined vitiligo, you do have to be careful coming up to the edges. 
But if you have a good, really good skin colour match, you shouldn't have to worry about that. That should take in the fact that it can sit on top of your skin and it can sit on the white patches. You may, I tend to not go over to the main skin as much, but if you've got lots and lots of patches, I would just put it over everything. And because of the high pigment in it, it will cover the white patches in the same way as it covers your, the rest of your skin. Always, always, always leave it to sink in for a minute or two. Now, I think that's what a lot of people don't do as well. They'll apply it, they'll be in a rush, they'll stick powder on it, or they'll leave it to dry and put another coat on. You need to leave at least a minute or two for that to sink into the pores. If you've got time and you want to, you can leave it for five, five or ten minutes. Generally, I would say just leave it for one or two minutes. Um, camouflage looks better when it's been left on the skin for an, half an hour to an hour because it's really had time to sink in. At the moment what can happen on normal skin is that it will look quite shiny because it's still a liquid product so it can look quite shiny but you don't need to worry about that again because you can powder and you can powder really quickly within a minute or two. Now something I found quite interesting recently is that a lot of patients, I've been doing this for 20 odd years and I've always used a powder just because that was how I was taught. Um, there are also sprays that if somebody's doing a full body or if they are going, they know they're going swimming a lot or something, then they might want a setting spray. I personally don't like the setting sprays too much because I find them really chemical, they're full of chemicals and I don't particularly like the idea of that all over somebody's body. But they're good for one day if you're having a wedding or wanting to go swimming a lot. But the thing I found recently is a lot of people have come back and said, actually, I'm not using the powder and it's fine. I've gone to bed in it. Um, a chap had a relatively large birthmark on his head. We covered it up. I showed him how to use the powder. He went away, came back a month later, said, I, I don't use any powder on it. I leave it at least half an hour to sink in the skin. I use it, I wear it for the day. I go to bed. I don't get it on my sheets. I don't get it on my pillow. Um, and I'm, I don't need the powder, which is brilliant. So a lot of people recently have actually started saying, I think as the product has improved over the years, um, you don't need the powder. But I think for some people, the powder is a bit of safe, a safety measure. Um, so while I'm letting that sink in, even though it's not really going to sink into the plastic skin, I'll just give you a little bit about the history of Veil. So I was interested in Veil a long time ago because near where I live in the UK, in Surrey, near London, um, there is a Mackindo Centre and it's a very good plastic surgery centre attached to the Queen Victoria Hospital. Uh, and I knew about Mackindo. He, he was the one that had asked his friend Thomas Blake after the Second World War, he set up what was known as the Guinea Pig Club. So a lot of the Second World War veterans had come home and because of the onset of medical services, they were starting to survive, whereas maybe after the First World War, they may have died from their wounds. They were starting to survive, but they had really extensive um, scarring, dermatosis, all sorts of issues. So um, Mackindo set up the guinea pig club and he worked together with Thomas Blake trying new plastic surgery techniques, but also knowing that as much of, as their physical confidence, they also needed their mental ability to reintegrate back into their society. And he asked Thomas Blake to set up, find a, a, a cover cream that would hide um, post-operative scars. So they came up with Veil and that was at the end of the Second World War. Now I think at that time it was a relatively thick product because most makeup then was theatrical makeup but over the years they've really fine-tuned it and now it's a really fine product. You don't notice if it's applied well and if it's applied with a very small amount you don't notice that it's in the skin and you can wear it all day and not feel like you're caked in something. Um, so that's all you need really is a couple of minutes just to let it sink in and then I will show you how I use the powder. I'm just going to clean off my finger here. So I'm just going to make sure that that's all blended around the edges. You don't want to see where the vitiligo starts and where the um, the rest of your pigmented skin 
where the vitiligo stops and where the rest of the pigmented skin starts. You don't want to see those edges at all. So the time that I take on something is not the application, it's just the fine tuning of the blending, whether you do that with your fingers or whether you do that with the sponge. And then you can take one of the powders. This is just a translucent powder. Again, even when it's your own, I would never put a brush into the powder. Um, you don't want to, and that's why I took it out with a cocktail stick. You don't want to be putting bacteria into your cream. Um, you don't want to be putting a, a brush on your face and then back in your powder. You want to keep them as clean as possible. Oh, excuse me. And then they last you years. So I always keep, if you get your powder with, a, with the holes in, I always keep the sticker on there so that, they, um, so that it doesn't come out of the holes and make a mess everywhere. And then I just take a tiny amount. Now you can, if you've got, if you're covering the whole body, obviously you can use a big brush, a big makeup brush, bigger, I would use bigger than this. You can put it in there, tap it off of your brush so you don't have all the excess, and then literally just dust with the brush all over the body. You could cover the body in about two minutes. Um, what I'm gonna do on the face, because when I've got a smaller area, what I tend to do is use a cotton pad. Again, because you don't have to wash it, you can just throw it away and it keeps everything hygienic. I've got my amount in the powder pot and I'm just literally gonna put my finger, my index finger in the middle, wrap the cotton wool around my finger, hold it with my middle finger and my thumb and dab in the pot. I want to get a lot of powder on my cotton pad, but then what I always want to do, and I must do, otherwise I'm gonna end up with a really congealed powdery face, is dab it, tap it off. So most of my powder has now come off, but I've got a nice amount around the whole area. So it's not just one little spot of it. This might seem like it's taken a long time. Once you get used to applying this, this covering this sort of area will take you 30 seconds to a minute, leaving your minute in between the actual application time. So I'm just going to dust on, again with a tap and roll, um, tap and roll, uh, what would you call it? Um, way of applying powder, dab and roll. And I'm going a little bit lighter this time than I did before. First of all, with the camouflage cream, I want to press it in. So I'm going nice and firm and I'm dabbing and rolling. When I've got the powder, I'm literally, I don't want to take, I don't want to end up taking the camouflage cream off if it hasn't all sunk in. So I'm going a bit lighter, a really medium firmness and going lighter and just dabbing and rolling. Don't worry if you can see the powder on there because that happens, we dust that off in a minute. But what this does, a lot of people, when I apply camouflage cream to them, they say, oh, it looks a bit shiny, and that's because it's slightly wet. That goes away with time anyway, because it sinks into the skin, but also it is a liquid cream product, so it will be slightly shiny. So a, a, um, a powder can take away that. Again, you would only do a light covering. If you feel like you really need more, just do another layer. You, you, Camouflage, any camouflage product is always better to put a really fine layer and then build up that fine layer. You can have two to three layers. Better to spend a little bit of time to do lots of fine layers than to do one thick layer because I guarantee you you'll be able to see that you've put it on. And once you get used to knowing how many layers you need, what I think happens with some people as well is you put a layer on and initially you want to cover this up and you cover it up so you put more and more layers on. When you start to become proficient at using it and it takes you less time, you also can learn to stand back a little bit, look in the mirror, see where the patches are and not feel like you have to put two layers on everything. You can maybe put a second layer on just the areas that are really obvious. Um, then you can, if you need a third layer, you can always put a small third layer on. But again, you won't need that third layer on everywhere. You will just need it a dab or two wherever that wherever that is really noticeable for you again in different lighting it's much better in daylight to do it because you're probably going to be in daylight most of the time if you find actually you're in work all day and that gives you a completely different light then try to get yourself a lamp with that sort of lighting and apply your camouflage in that but make sure you tested it outside because you're going to be going outside and that's the sort of harshest 
its light that will show up any inaccuracies. Any inaccuracies. So yeah, so I'm just going to apply a tiny bit more. Sophie doesn't really need it. She's got nice, she hasn't got greasy skin at all, but we're just going to blend that in. And you can dab onto the rest of your skin. You can use it as a face powder if you want. Just dab onto the T-zone. You know, I've barely got anything on there now, but I still use that tiny amount that I've got on the pad just to blend in. And then I will take, I will turn it over like this. I will take the clean side and I will literally just dust off the excess skin like this. Now what I would do if I was doing a large area uh, with the brush, if I had a much bigger brush than this and I was doing either the whole face or I was doing arms and legs, I would put it on, I would put the powder on, dust it on and then I would clean my brush with a clean tissue and then I would lightly dust off the excess powder so that you could just do it really quickly. And I think that's the whole point of camouflage. If you've been to a practitioner and they've showed you how to fill each little tiny hole, if somebody, had, if somebody came with me with a large area, I wouldn't suggest they work like that. This is more for somebody who just wants to cover their eyes or a few little patches on their body. Somebody came with me with a large area, I would definitely have a pump, um, leg and body cover, find the match of the skin tone with that, and then apply it like a moisturiser. Very, very small amount in the middle of your hand, maybe rub it in between your hands like this, and then literally just apply it like this. Um, blend, if you need to blend anything, just spend that time blending the edges, and then powder in, in a big area. So anything that you do should take you five to 10 minutes, I think, in the morning. I don't know, I'd be interested to find out, Polly, how long it takes you if you are doing a full coverage. Um, if you wanted to cover everything, because whether you're going to the beach or somewhere, I'd be interested, now you're really proficient at it, how long you think it takes you to do a full body cover. I've literally just done my hands and arms as you were doing that, um, because I'm, I'm literally shooting off to the gym in a minute, and, it, and I did it looking at you, so I wasn't in yeah. front of a mirror, um, so I've literally just done my hands and arms I did my hands with the tan light my arms with the tan medium it took less than a couple of minutes it's dried I've got a tissue I'm rubbing it nothing's coming off so is that the way of showing so that tissue is is your kind of just making sure yeah, it's it in it rub. Just make sure it's, yeah make sure it's dry uh, any excess will just buff, buff off and then that's it, it's yeah. on. Um, yeah. If I was doing, I mean, like I said, I don't do a whole body all the time, okay. um, but just now, because I know I'm shooting off to the gym, I've just done my chest area, uh, my shoulders just here, the inside of my arms, you probably can't even see my patches now, and I've gone slightly lighter on my hands because um, the tan medium looks a bit too dark on my hands, so I've gone tan light um, just to make them look more natural. Um, uh, but I have recommended Veil before. It is a great product, same as yeah. Derma Blend Cover Mark, yeah. for what you've just done, which is a smaller area where you can spend the time to to use a product and a powder and, and all that and it yeah. can give a really good result. Um, for me, my son's got vitiligo and on the website I've demonstrated using vitiligo and again it's very similar, the dab and roll technique, but you don't need the powder or anything like that yeah. afterwards. So you can still use vitiligo on smaller areas, but really it's designed, like you said, like a, a body and leg makeup it's yeah. it's really good for the larger i mean my elbows are completely white as you can see now i've got my vitiligo on they're not uh, you know so it's much better for larger more awkwardly placed mm -hmm. patches mm -hmm. under your arms again i've just quickly gone under because again i've got very white armpits and when you're in mm -hmm. the gym <laughs> it doesn't look great what's happening now is that is that the brands, all the brands, are having to come out with products. So Veil do a leg and body cover now. That's, right. only been, yeah. that's only been out in the last year at the most because they have to, because they know that as it's yeah. becoming 
grown and as certain as people know more about camouflage they're learning what they need to know. It, was, it was really interesting how you said veil vale came about from the guy um and it's the same as cover mark it's an american brand and a lady had suffered very bad burns and had, had developed and and so and as great as that product is for many people for pigmented skin or birthmarks or scars, the person who developed it didn't have vitiligo. The difference okay. for me is I have the condition, I've lived with it for over 25 years. So for me, I know, uh, along with other people who have vitiligo, exactly what you're trying to what get from a product and exactly the result you're after. And I think that's why people like Vail and, and Deb, Deb Derma blend and cover mark are trying to catch up a bit because they haven't got the experience right. I've got, which is a whole body of having to wear a whole body foundation or a ca camouflage cover over my whole body. Um, and it's great that they are bringing out those products because, like I said, vitiligo isn't going to be for everybody and it might not have the right color for somebody where they all might. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it's just about trying products personal preference yeah. but having that choice having you know choice. years ago people yeah. with vitiligo and had no choice they didn't no. they had hardly any products to choose from you know and it's all about having a choice nowadays if you choose not to wear a product fantastic if you choose to then there should be different products you know that and suit different people that give different yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why I think one of the things I noticed for about 15 years doing it was that the color choice was very very Caucasian led and then yeah. just a few and then relatively few quite a few dark dark colors and there just was nowhere in between and, and the ones that they had in between they weren't designed by a camouflage practitioner I can guarantee you those colors were not designed by a camouflage practitioner so the colors that we've designed with veil are colors that i mix they're like three colors mix that i use so many times and now we've actually got it in in one pot or one tube or however it you can order it in different ways um and i think the other companies will need to catch up on that as well is just so that people can have that choice and the way that you do um you've got the light and the dark uh, drop what i tend to do with my patients is they will have a summer color and a winter color so they only need to come and see me twice they get their products they've got two um, tubes of cream and then they're always going to be somewhere in between those two so generally in the winter they're the lighter color and as they start to get slightly darker they add a little dab of their dark color and then they might add two dabs of their dark color three dabs of their dark color until they become the dark color and that's all they're ever going to need you know their skin may change in tone i notice every kind of 10 to 15 years that their, their skin tone may change slightly so i think it's something that you you don't need to keep on top of all the time but maybe every 10 to 15 years actually have a look at what's out there and have a look at your skin tone and whether it really really works again but other than that they are really i find them um they've always kept a lev a limit on the price most of the brands have kept a limit on the price i think again they used to offer the sort of smaller pots but now they're tending to offer the more full coverage ones so that people don't have to spend so much money um, and i think what i used to do a long time ago as well was mix moisturizer with it so that it would go further if it still gave enough of a coverage for somebody but that's pretty much what I wanted to say today. I'm more than happy we've got time to answer some questions if anybody's got any questions for me. I think the only comment, oh, uh, the only comment I had, and a bit like you, Ray, is that, well, for both you talking about the leg and body cream, Ray, but also you, Polly, is that when we see younger folk, the products that you're talking about and how you might apply them now and certainly you know looking for easier and greater coverage that it's got to be better for them hasn't it yes. you know if you're not worrying about very little specific um bespoke areas if you've got somebody who chooses to wear camouflage and particularly if they're younger even when they're children that are old enough to actually appreciate that they want to use it for a while 
it's going to be so much easier for them for them to use it isn't it and in one go yes yes definitely yeah. and i think it's great when they start in, the products are now starting to be so that you don't need the powder you know I, yeah. I still I think maybe that's just because I've always done it that way I still mm -hmm. offer the powder and I still show the powder but if people are, are one having different products where they don't need a powder at all or knowing that they have a choice with the powder because it's still waterproof it's still fully waterproof and transference proof yeah. without the powder yeah, again I mean, it's quicker it's easier it's manageable for children of any age mm. and it's still durable you're not losing it, anything you're not having yes. that extra layer. so we did some tests um about how long it would last and it would it definitely last between two to three days on the body what you might get after that time is is some areas that look a little bit more worn and then you can literally just top up those areas. But for, for some people that need to wear it every day and need to have a lot of their body covered every day, some people like to keep it on. There's, it's, there's never been any side effects with any of the camouflage creams out there. Um, they don't seem to, there's nobody that has been allergic or no related cases that somebody has um, shown that they've been allergic to it or anything so all of these products are really well made and I think it's really important it's difficult if you're buying off the internet because you can spend so much money it's really yeah. good if you can find a practitioner in your area and they have all the products like I would definitely like to get hold of some Vitali Glow and use it and see what it's like because it would be so helpful for patients um, and use all of the products and then you know you tend to favor one definitely but it, it means that that patient has got the choice and they're not all going to like the same product as the person before so I think that's really important to know but I suppose what I was meaning to say there was rather than wasting all your money going to the internet to try to find all these different products and all these different color matches, finding a good practitioner, one good practitioner in your area. I mean, obviously as few of us here are over in London. Um, so I don't know the practitioners over in, uh, in Australia and Australia is quite a big company, but I'm sure um, is, so just to ask you, is your skin camouflage services, is that Australia based or UK based? Um, oh, we're in the UK, but um, yes. I spent some time in uh, Australia, but that was a while ago now. But yeah, we. So UK. I don't know if Australia has a skin camouflage network, does it? Jennifer, do you know? Um, so, yeah, so, so Joanna Blair, um, I believe, is our uh, camouflage expert. Um, at the moment, I, I don't think we, um, apart from Jenna, I, I myself don't know of um, any other camouflage um, sort of service that patients can go to. I, I may be wrong. Um, it, yeah. Don't want to... What I mean is a network where patients, you know, from all over Australia can find a practitioner near them. So that's what we have here with the British Association of Skin Camouflage. And um, if somebody phones me from a long way away I'll say to them if you get in touch with Basque then they will find you a practitioner nearer you um, so that, that just tends to make it easier for people but I think these things will come it just as camouflage is becoming more known and talked about and worn then I think those sorts of things will come so yeah thank you Jennifer Thank you so much, Ray. Um, yeah, th thank you so much for the demonstration. That was fantastic to be able to see how you apply the product and the tips and tricks of, you know, the rolling um, technique. Um, I will just post the uh, website to Vail on the chat box um, in case anyone's interested. Um, and Mary Rose just had a question. Um, uh, so I'll just read it out. I'm interested in medical tattooing. Do you come to Australia? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Medical tattooing for vitiligo is one of those things that you really have to, it's different for everybody. So for some vitiligo patients I've had for tattooing, um, that the pigment does not stay in their skin at all. 
you can go over and over and over and that pigment doesn't last in their skin. Um, and then for other patients, you'll do mainly small areas. I would never do a large area because you're not going to get a good, good enough coverage because the needles are so tiny. I just wouldn't, I would probably do an area of that sort of, of that sort of size at the most, maybe a couple of areas. Um, and for some people it takes really well, but for some people it just doesn't hold. Um, and you don't know that until you've tried it. So you can do patch tests and everything. Um, but no, Australia, I don't go over to Australia. Sorry, no, it's quite, it's quite a way. And, but um, I don't know what the medical tattooing's like over there, actually. You maybe need to do a little bit of research, but it is something you need to be aware of that it may, you, you may be the person where it really doesn't hold on your skin. I think for vitiligo, I would say 80% of my patients I would choose camouflage for, not, not tattooing, definitely. I think um, what you've said, Ray, is exactly right. But the only thing I might add to that is that, of course, that your areas affected by vitiligo can change. And, of course, you uh, can, even if you could tattoo a particular area, then if that pigmentation then changes again, then the tattoo is isolated in a different spot. So, so it's that, not, yeah. that's perfect, Jill. I should have mentioned that. So you can only tattoo someone whose vitiligo has been static for seven, at least seven years. Yeah. I normally say 10 years. If that vitiligo has been static for at least seven years, generally, I'm not going to stimulate any change and generally that vitiligo will stay the same for the rest of, of time. Now, what, what can happen with tattooing is you can stimulate a um, it to start again and it to start moving. So you have to be really aware of that. So I wouldn't tattoo anyone whose vitiligo was changing or had been static for a year or two, four, four or five or six years. They have to have been, they have to be able to prove to you that it's been static for at least seven years and then they're less at risk for that to change. So that's a really good point and I should have mentioned that. Yeah, thank you, Jill. No, it just occurred to me as you were talking. Yeah, yeah. All right, so any other questions for, or comments um, for Ray? Before we wrap up tonight's workshop. No, I, I, I think that's it. So thank you so much again to our speakers, um, Joe, Polly and Ray for speaking to us today. We are so grateful that you were able to join us and share your expertise. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone um, for um, being a part of the workshop as well. I definitely learned a lot um, about camouflaging for vitiligo today um, and about the, the specific products as well, which was great. And I hope everyone was able to get a bit of something out of today's workshop as well. Um, please note that our second workshop is um, hosted again next week, Saturday 1st of August at 5.50 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, so same time as today. Um, we will be having camouflage expert um, uh, from the UK, so Vanessa Jane Davies um, and uh, Julie Buckley from Queensland and company representatives uh, from um, Cryolan, Xander and Oxygenetics, so it's a full schedule and we will be really looking forward to seeing everyone there uh, um, again. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, any final comments or uh, questions on that note? I just want to say thank you and I learned a lot actually from being here so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much Ray for being part of this uh, workshop um, and Great. Oh, th thanks, Heather, for your comment. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure if any of the VAA um, committee members wanted to say anything before we close the workshop. Uh, I would just like to uh, echo your comments, Jennifer, and thank everyone for, of, for the presentations and for attending. And it was so incredibly informative. I thought it was just fabulous. And as a person with vitiligo, I learned so much um, about all the techniques and, and, the, and the great products and the issues about tattooing. And yeah, it, it actually far exceeded my expectations in terms of the incredible breadth of 
issues that, that were covered today. And uh, yeah, thank you again. It was really, really good. Great, great. Well done, Jennifer, as well for organising and thank you and for everyone for their time and, and effort. Great, thank, thank you, Lana. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening or great morning, um, or probably lunchtime now. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you again.